the future is a choice now, right? It is still a choice now. There will come a moment extremely soon where the future is no longer a choice. Before we go forward and start doing the concrete things that we have to do about energy and transport and replanting and all of that, that we, whoa, 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 let's just take a pause. Let's just, you know, pause for a minute and check how we're thinking about this. We learned that if you go at something with a sense of self-defeatism, that it's highly likely that you will be defeated. And at the same time, we understand that if we crawl into a little box of anger, despair, fear, doom and gloom, we're not going to do anything positive to change. I'm Days, um, I'm 20 and I'm a climate justice activist. I joined Extinction Rebellion in January 2019 and then after April I became uh, the XR Youth Redemptive Culture Coordinator. My friend told me about Extinction Rebellion as she went to a protest um, and then we decided to go to a meeting and that meeting made so much sense. It, it preached the urgency that I, I know is needed and it was just feeling like you're not that crazy environmentalist but just someone who just cares. You need. The, the mix of, of love and rage, because you need that anger to keep you going and to fire you up, but you also need that softening, that, that empathy, that understanding. You feel the love and the atmosphere and, and the hope for a better future there, you know, and I feel like the media doesn't portray that as well as they really could. Although I love Extinction Rebellion so much, I hope that one day it doesn't have to exist. I hope that we get so far where the work that we do will become redundant. I remember I did a talk a couple months ago and someone called me uh, an alarmist um, and said XR is an alarmist organisation and they try and make people scared. And it's not about making people scared, it's about telling people the truth and holding them in that truth. Because if we just don't look at it, it doesn't mean it's going to go away. I, I'm pretty sure if you ask anyone in the Global South who's like facing the consequences of climate change right now, they would not call us alarmists. So I think it's remembering like the privilege that we do have for being in the West, but also what we need to do because we are the ones who are causing the issue. We need to do better and we need to help change the system. We have to understand we are just one part of this and we need to play our role. What is climate optimism and why is it so important? Optimism can be often confused with happiness and I think the difference with that is that the climate crisis isn't something to take lightly. Yes, you should be hopeful, but you can't sit back and relax and think it's all gonna be okay because there's a lot of work to be done and there's a lot of change that needs to happen. So this optimism should really be used as a mindset to frame your action more so than to make you feel that relief or that comfort. It should still be taken with uh, the most urgency. When did you start taking on this optimistic approach? After doing a lot of environmental research, you really start to feel the weight of it. I needed to feel this new motivation. I needed to keep going. And that's when I found this organization, Global Optimism, which really used the same the same drive and purpose within their work. So Christiana Figueres, as well as Tom Ribbett Karnak, uh, released this book called The Future We Choose. And in this book, they summarize this stubborn optimism where you can, you can use this approach that it's, it's not soft, it's gritty. And this is just so effective and really kind of changed the way I thought about climate action and thought about the climate crisis in general. I, found that it could reach so many more people and as well as engage so many more people in the sense that ultimately we're all humans on a planet and we want a better future for our families, our children and that's where this kind of optimistic approach comes in. And more recently I worked with Christiana at the United Nations running the secret strategic campaign to achieve the Paris Agreement. Well can we start with optimism? We have learned over um, the past few years that optimism is a very important component when you are facing any challenge. And if I look back, the first time that I realized that 
was 2010 when I was a very freshly named executive secretary of the um, Climate Change Convention. And I went to my very first press conference and I was asked, Ms. Figueres, uh, given the fact that just six months ago, the climate negotiations suffered their greatest failure in Copenhagen. Do you think that the world will ever be capable of coming together to a global agreement? And I said immediately, without even thinking about it, not in my lifetime. And that might, not in my lifetime, I think was very reflective of the global mood. Well, when I heard myself say, not in my lifetime, I realized that that was an impossible standpoint from which to start the challenge. And I mean, I have such a strong memory of that, of like that road to Paris where everybody thought that this was completely impossible. How we show up and the attitudes that we have towards this issue are going to make a fundamental difference in our ability to be successful. It, it does take time to get to optimism and I feel like it's such a journey like for me I always talk about it from it, it, it first started with a lot of grief loss and anger and then it went into the you know acknowledging my power within changing things I feel like there's so much external pressure to know what you're doing to know where you're going to know how you can you know create financial security and it just takes away from actually just being able to live life and do what you love and, and we're seeing this all across university campuses we're seeing this in, in schools and especially now we're seeing this in very young kids as well in primary schools you're seeing people being diagnosed with depression and anxiety around what's going on and i think people need to start recognizing what this is doing to young people's mental health there are so many different types of regenerative cultures that will be largely affected by you know, where you live in the world or what's your community like. But for, for my community, the, the first part of it is self-care. I think that's, that's where Black Lives Matter has had this really special moment this year. It's by everyone having that time to really do that deep inner work on themselves. And I think it's, it's something that I've just been lucky to start this quite early on in my life, um, where like, as a young person, I feel like we, we don't have tunnel vision because we're so open to learning and being better versions of ourselves. And I think that a lot of older people need to break that tunnel and start seeing the world in, you know, all, all colours. <laughs> people talk about, you know, people and the planet, but it, it is people and the planet <laughs> and everything else that's living on this earth. And, and that's what we need to start doing. We need to start seeing things very holistically. To be honest, I, I do feel like this understanding comes from my own, like, you know, indigenous cultures from, um, I'm originally from Nigeria, my family's from Nigeria, and I, I've gained so much from the learning and teachings from my ancestors. Um, and it's, it's to see everything as a whole uh, and to see what part of the whole are you. And, and that's the, you know, the thing that I feel like in you know, the Western Hemisphere is not done so well. You, you do have to understand that this is, this is like a shared purpose that we all have. You know, and it's understanding that we're in this together. It's holding on to the fact that things can change, things have changed and things will change. We all come from very different places and very different cultures and backgrounds. And once we start visioning together, um, we will be so open to accepting so much and, you know, not accepting the negatives in society, but accepting the positives, you know, and that's, that's what optimism rallies around.